Hello, very warm welcome to Granada Reports. We're live with the latest across the northwest. Hello there, on the programme this evening. The club and bar owners who say the government's rushing through new rules for so-called vaccine passports. We want your views ahead of a major debate on the government's plan B in Parliament. No one actually knows 100% what the rules are when you get a 24-page document of legal legislation and it's supposed to go live tomorrow. It's just very disrupting. We'll be finding out how our region's MPs are likely to vote and hearing what one of our region's best-known club owners has got to say. Also tonight. It's all smiles at Liverpool John Lennon Airport, where a new gateway to the world's taking off soon. Not for the faint-hearted, a special report on roller derby, the American import that's proving a real hit in our region. New home needed for high-maintenance huskies. The appeal for a kind dog owner to take these two best friends who come as a pair. And it was quite foggy in a few parts of the region this morning, but what does the forecast have in store? Find out later on. So, lots of reasons to stay with us, please. First, though, that confusion and fear for the future among the people who run our clubs, bars and restaurants on the eve of the controversial Plan B COVID measures coming into force. Businesses in the hospitality sector are facing new rules and regulations, which some have labelled a vaccine passport. People wishing to enter certain indoor venues will need to provide proof they've had their jabs or show a negative test. Opinion on the rules is very much divided, but among the critics, a number of our region's MPs say they won't be supporting the government in that vote which is happening tonight. The latest from Westminster after this report from our correspondent Rob Smith. We're getting punished for this but I can go to the supermarket and I don't need to get checked. A bar and club owner who argues if he's checking Covid passes everyone should. Mark Freejack from Longridge calculated the cost for checks at just one of his venues. He says it's the equivalent of £11,000 a year. Money he believes all indoor public places should have to find. Have you been to the supermarket when it's obviously after a turkey season, sh late night shopping at the moment? There's people everywhere. That's not regulated. You know, it seems to be one rule for hospitality and everything else. And hospitality is always under the foot from the government, unfortunately. And it's about time that some other people shared the responsibility as well as us. <laughs> With PCR tests unavailable to book earlier today and free lateral flows out of stock online, some club bosses are worried. How they say will certain customers and staff prove their COVID status? They think new and complex rules have been rushed through too fast. No one actually knows 100% what the rules are when you get a 24-page document of legal legislation and it's supposed to go live tomorrow. It's just very disrupting. I've spoken to licensing and police, and as much as we have a great relationship with them, they're in the same boat. They don't know how they're going to implement it, follow up on it, and they're still trying to get us extra guidance so we can work together with them. I will give way to my honourable friend. The government are trying to convince their critics to work with ministers. They insist the regulations aren't about surveillance or control. This is not a vaccine passport. It, it is, it's really important to me, as a point of principle, that people have a range of different routes to show how they're eligible. And that is what it is before the House today. These options include showing proof of a negative test for the last 48 hours, proof of vaccination, a medical examination, or evidence of participation in a clinical trial. Long queues for boosters, like here in Manchester, could now be cut. The 15-minute wait after a jab's been temporarily scrapped for those getting either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines. Plus, more vaccine centres are being opened across the northwest. the Army helping to build one inside Chester Cathedral. You know, it's that Dunkirk spirit, isn't it? People coming out to, to help. And since, uh, you know, since the announcements last week, let alone the ones on Sunday... Uh, we have had a, an influx of people asking to help volunteer at sites, marshalling, stewarding, supporting sites and also uh, vaccinating retired clinicians, people who work part time but want to do a bit extra to help the efforts. Efforts reflected in the sheer numbers jabbed yesterday, the busiest Monday for vaccinations since the rollout began. Rob Smith, ITV News.
Yeah, such a massive operation. Well, our political correspondent, Leisha McNally, is at Westminster Forest tonight. Leisha, MPs, of course, due to vote on this in the next hour now. So how easy do you think it's going to be for the government to get Plan B through? Well, Labour have said that they will support the Plan B measures. And just as a reminder, they include extending compulsory face masks to more indoor spaces, advising people to work from home if they can, and rolling out those COVID passports. That support means that tonight's vote is one that the Conservative government is almost guaranteed to win. But while the end of business today is something of a foregone conclusion, it's what happens between now and that vote which could prove to be really quite uncomfortable for the government as they realise how much loyalty they could have lost among former Red Wall MPs. More than 70 politicians are expected to defy the whip and vote against their own government tonight, at least half a dozen from the North West. And the criticisms from Parliament today have been really quite wide-ranging. Many of those planning to rebel say they don't agree with either the logic or the practicality of the COVID passports that we heard all about in Rob's report. Others say decisions are being made without enough transparency and that it could open the doors to more draconian measures. Well, one of those MPs expected to defy the whip tonight is the MP for Blackpool South, Scott Benton. He's tweeted, we need to learn to live with COVID and people need to take responsibility for their own health. We can't respond to each new variant by bringing back illiberal restrictions. This endless cycle needs to end. Now, the government maintains that what it's doing is proportionate in response to the great unknown that we're all reckoning with at the moment, which is quite how bad could the Omicron variant get. If we think that capacity risks being breached, then we simply have to step in. Because we know that this, what this would mean in practice for both COVID and for non-COVID care, it would mean one of your constituents, perhaps, is in a car crash. Maybe it's a child in a car crash. They need emergency care. And the NHS having to make difficult decisions about who deserves treatment and who doesn't. Well, that is a pretty stark warning. And when the North West MPs take their turn to vote in the next half hour or so, they'll have to balance preserving the liberty and the livelihoods of their constituents while doing enough to save their lives. And we'll be watching for those developments. Leash, thank you. Well, meanwhile, sad to say, clubs and restaurants are already facing cancellations and confusion. Greater Manchester's nighttime economy advisor, Sasha Lord, says the new rules will mean, among other things, that people can't be spontaneous on night sales. If you go for a few drinks after work and you want to go into a larger bar and you haven't been jabbed, well, that's, that's taken away now. And I think we could see a lot of the larger venues on the high streets really, really hurt by these passports. I guess what the government say that you know, isn't this about doing the best in what is a difficult situation? It is. And we're there to work with the government. No one in this sector wants to do anything that would harm customers. For the operators I'm talking to, they're saying this is now far worse than when we were restricted at 50 percent, because at least at that point, there was some support. The chancellor is missing in all this. He has to come forward and, and urgently as well, because from people I'm speaking to, December is the moment where you can take up to 25, 30% of the whole of your annual turnover within these remaining three to four weeks. Why don't you think we are seeing the Chancellor then? I actually have no idea. He's, he's on the missing list. You know, some people are saying, you know, he, he knows that the industry is suffering right now. And this is a way of, you know, they've, they've not put huge restrictions on. So it's a way of them actually not having to pay any money. I am urging him to come forward because if he doesn't, businesses are going to fold in January. Businesses are going to have to make huge redundancies. You know, in, in Greater Manchester here, we employ more than 470,000 people in the nighttime economy. A lot of those jobs are now at risk. Some club owners are saying that the club should be treated in the same way as supermarkets. Would you go along with that? Well, I think, look, let's be honest, nightclubs are slightly different to supermarkets, aren't they? You know, in a nightclub, you are shoulder to shoulder. When we look back months and months ago, Sage was saying the safest places are places with good ventilation. Well, it's a planning condition for most hospitality nightclubs to have good ventilation. It's not necessarily for, for non-essential retail. So there is an argument there for that. You know, nobody wants to see a spike created by, by a nightclub. You've kind of told us a lot about, you know, the concerns, the issues that you have with the implementation of these new restrictions. 
What do you want to happen now? What can happen now? There is one thing that this government absolutely needs to do. And, uh, you know, there are some people that, that say, well, you can't keep handing out money, handing out money, handing out money. And I get that. I totally get it. There is one thing they can do where they're not handing out money. And that is the VAT issue. They reduced VAT from 20% to 5%, which was great. They then put it up to 12.5%. In March, it goes to 20%. I would say to the government, freeze that VAT at 12.5% for another two years. If that doesn't happen, what do you see happening to a lot of these clubs and bars in the new year? Lucy, these, these clubs, bars, restaurants, pubs have taken on so much debt over the last 20 months. And the people are now at a cliff edge. I, I am confident, sadly, that in January we're going to see many closures, many job losses, unless the Chancellor comes forward. And in it... Lucy, it's heartbreaking. I've been in this position for 20 months speaking to operators on a daily basis. We, we need support. We need the help from my industry. And I'm screaming and pleading with the Chancellor, don't ignore us. Do not ignore us. We are the fifth biggest industry in the whole of the UK. And if you're going to turn your back on us now, then we will remember this. Finally, what would your message be to anyone who's planning a night out this Christmas? Be safe, use your common sense. If you do not feel safe going out, I totally, totally get it. I understand that. What you absolutely must do if you have a booking is pick up that phone because on the back of your booking, that venue has bought produce, it has brought staff in. If you don't pick up the phone, you're doing more harm to that business than you can possibly imagine now. Sasha, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good advice. We can all help by doing our bit. If we're going to not turn up somewhere, please let them know beforehand. It's the least that we can do. At the same time, people in the Isle of Man are being urged to come forward for their jabs. The Manx government hope all eligible adults over 18 will have been invited for their booster by the middle of January. The health minister also acknowledged that fewer people are showing up for their third dose. It's not a position I think anybody wanted to be in, if I'm honest, uh, but we will work uh, hard, as hard as we can really to make sure that we do everything possible to get people their boosters as quickly as we can. Uh, and like you said, the aim uh, hopefully will be to get as many of these appointments booked as quickly as possible at this side of, this side of Christmas with that target date being kind of early mid-January to get everybody uh, at least offered that, that vaccine. Uh, well, as ever, thank you to everyone who's been in touch to offer us their views about the Plan B measures. They've been coming in thick and fast. Certainly have. We asked if you were still going out at night and if uh, having to prove your vaccination status is putting you off. Andy Williams told us, not clubbing, but we're definitely having a little Christmas meal out with our little team. Uh, Sherry Binston said, great name, Sherry. I'll be having one of those, uh, one or two of those for Christmas myself. Um, yep, still going out. Was at the Gary Barlow concert last night at the arena in Liverpool. It felt great to sing, dance and be normal for those two outs. Yeah, very jealous of that. Claire Benson, though, sounds a less happy note. She says, I've decided to cancel all the events I'd planned. I think it's best to stay local, do my tests and wear a mask if I meet anyone. It's a small price to pay to keep my family safe. Yeah, this one's from Skellens Estate Agents in Wirral. Um, they said, uh, we cancelled a drinks evening for our lovely clients. We're all fully jabbed, mask wearing and social distancing. We can celebrate once this is all passed. Uh, and a final one from Paul Walsh, who uh, it's short and to the point. Uh, yep, he says, I'm still going out and I'm playing my darts tonight. So good luck with that, Paul. Hope Have you win. Day. OK, let's move on to more news tonight. And the police response to the Manchester Arena bombing was, I quote, grossly deficient. That's the view of lawyers representing the families of those who died. The inquiry into the attack heard how Greater Manchester Police failed to communicate with the other emergency services. Their planning was haphazard and inadequate, and the force duty officer inevitably became overwhelmed. The fire service were also accused of catastrophic failures. They didn't arrive at the arena for more than two hours. The Greater Manchester Fire and Rescue Service contributed precisely nothing to the rescue of victims of the bomb attack who had lain stricken in the city room for so long. It was left to waiting patients, off-duty nurses, the walking wounded and unarmed police to fill the places vacated by the fire service. Tributes left in Liverpool city centre for Ava White have been moved after a request from her family. 
Ava, who was 13, died after being stabbed last month. Flowers and balloons left close to where it's happened have now been moved by the council so they don't get damaged by the weather. And there's some good news tonight for Liverpool John Lennon Airport. It's announced it's opening up a major new route next year. The airport will be connecting with Frankfurt, courtesy of the German airline Lufthansa, from May. It's hoped the service will allow passengers boarding at Liverpool to connect via Frankfurt to more than 150 destinations in Europe, but also in the Middle East, Asia, Africa and the Americas. Business leaders say it is great news. It's very much about having sort of the one ticket that you can go to virtually anywhere in the world through the Lufthansa network from Liverpool. So when you change, you don't need to uh, go through customs again. You don't need to go through passport control. It's one ticket and you can go anywhere through uh, the Liverpool to Frankfurt route. It's brilliant. Yeah, it sounds great. Exciting stuff. I want to um, go. <laughs> uh, lots to come on the programme coming up. Gordon Harris passes to Jimmy Robson. Between Brown's feet, it's in the net. Tributes to Jimmy Robson, a 100-goal hero of Burnley Football Club. And the fog this morning was a real pain for many of us on the roads, but it did give us some beautiful weather photos. Will there be any more in the forecast? Let's find out later on. Ah, now it's time to see who's behind door 14 of our advent calendar of local heroes. Tonight is the turn of Pete McCleave from Cheshire. Pete has blood cancer and needs a stem cell transplant. His story made a huge impact on us all when he started his campaign to get more people on the register, a campaign that has found 17 matches. That is 17 lives saved. Pete is yet to find a match for himself, but he hopes that his 10,000 donors campaign will save his life along with many others. <laughs> My name is Peter McCleave. I work for a campaign that I set up called 10,000 Donors and our purpose is to raise awareness of stem cell technology. It started out as a very personal challenge to myself after my diagnosis and prognosis of seven years. My, I remember the conversation my doctor had with me and he said, because you are white European, you've got a very good chance of finding your match today. My family heritage is a blend of English, Irish, Chinese and Portuguese, and that's why I found it difficult to find my, I'm still to find my match today. But as the campaign grew, it became very clear, clear quite quickly that it was, it was beyond just me. To date, we've had nearly 90,000 people register and we've had 17 confirmed donor matches for patients somewhere in the world. And that's 17 lives potentially saved. So certainly hope given to those patients in need of that stem cell donor match. My hopes for 2022 are I would love to find my own stem cell donor match. I have no intention of leaving my wife and two sons without a husband and father. But now 2022 is all about r ramping up the operations for 10,000 donors, engaging in some more fun projects to raise awareness and engage people and keep people interested in what we're trying to do. It must be such an incredible feeling knowing that you've saved um, 17 lives. Um, you can hear more from Pete and other stories on our podcast. Um, from the North, uh, here's a flavour of uh, what's in store. Hello, welcome to From the North. What is the North South Divide? One of the very first people to be matched as part of my campaign was in Manchester. He still receives letters from the recipient of his stem cells. We have Manchester here, which has always been like, you know, the bright, the bright shining beacon for all the LGBT people from all over the Northwest. You can find more episodes and subscribe to our channel wherever you get your podcast from. Now, Burnley have paid tribute to club legend Jimmy Robson, who's passed away at the age of 82. Jimmy scored 100 goals in 242 appearances for the Clarets and was part of the team that won the first division title in 1960. He also played for Blackpool and Bury. Burnley say they're saddened to hear the news and the thoughts of everyone at Turf Moor are with Jimmy's family and friends. Jimmy had Alzheimer's, but speaking to us in 2018, he remembered fondly that title-winning team and his days of combining playing with working down the pit. We did well. I mean, considering we had their part-time players in, we had four or five part-time players in. 
yet we finished winning the league. We'd go in at 7 o'clock in the morning, come out about 10 o'clock, go down to Gorthorpe, train with the rest of the team, and then come back and go to the pitch again and finish where we shift off. But um, that was the way it was, and that was the way we worked it. Yes, the memories of former Burnley, Blackpool and Berry player Jimmy Robson, who's passed away at the age of 82. Now, the North West is home to some of the world's top sports teams. Think of the likes of Manchester United and Liverpool. But did you know it also is home to one of the best roller skating teams in the world? Roller Derby is one of the fastest growing sports globally. And before the pandemic, Rainy City were ranked seventh worldwide. Our reporter Narwan Branch went to see the team in training in Salford. Pace, power, poise. Roller derby isn't a sport for the faint-hearted, hurtling full throttle into full contact while on quad skates is exactly what's expected. You get to really be in tune with your aggression and I think as a woman that's really important. There's a lot of conditioning to be gentle and nice and this is a space where you, do, you can just leave that all behind. In roller derby, teams score points by using their nominated jammer. The jammer's role is to skate their way around the track as many times as possible. Now the other players will try to block the opposition jammer from making their way through, whilst the jammer's teammates will try and carve open a space for the jammer just to slide through and collect the points. Bulldozing in from across the pond, Roller Derby continues to grow in the UK. Rainy City began just 13 years ago and are regularly ranked in the world's top 20. Before COVID, we had um, our A team was like top 10 in the world. Um, they were top in the UK. Our B team was one of the best teams in Europe and consistently, you know, bringing other teams from Europe to come to Manchester, to come to Oldham when we were in Oldham. So many people in the Royal Derby community in America and Australia and New Zealand and all over the world have heard of Manchester because of Rainy City. It's this tenacious spirit that makes these women among the best players in the country. But new talent is always welcome in this inclusive community. It's really cool. It's like the fastest growing women's sport in the UK. Um, it's predominantly like dominated by um, female identifying skaters. So there is a men's version of the sport, but it's not as popular. Um, so that in itself is really cool for the sport that it's led by, you know, female identifying skaters. Um, we're really like open and inclusive as well. So we're like open to all, um, which is really nice for sport, um, especially so a lot of us that play didn't play sports when we were younger. Um, so it's a really nice way to get into doing something to like keep you active. Training may have been called off during the pandemic, but this winter, these players are firmly getting back on track. Narayan Branch, ITV News, Salford. Now then, of course, this is the time of year when we're always warned not to get a dog for Christmas. But tonight, we have a story of two dogs, absolutely the best of friends, who really need to find a new home. Yeah, they're huskies, and it's fair to say that, true to their breed, Angel and Logan are quite a handful. They love to run and run, and, of course, their energy is boundless. Yeah, and there are two of them. That's a lot of walkies. They've been inseparable since they were puppies, and it would be so sad to separate them now. So an animal sanctuary is searching for a suitable owner who can handle the two boisterous friends. Tim Scott reports. Angel in white and Logan who's brown aren't brother and sister but they've been inseparable since they were one year old. Now three the Huskies are currently homed at the Bleakholt Animal Sanctuary in Ramsbottom but staff here are having trouble finding a permanent home for the pair as this breed is extremely high maintenance. The high energy um, if they don't get the mental and the physical needs met they can become destructive they become bored very easily they enjoy running they'd be ideal on somebody who does a lot of fell running something like that would be ideal angel and logan have formed a deep bond and it's hoped whoever comes forward will be able to take them together as a pair logan and angel have lost a fair bit of weight between them since they've been in kennels it's a sign that they're stressed and anxious and it's also a sign that this pair need a real home together as soon as possible the huskies have been at the sanctuary for over three months and staff are now reluctantly considering splitting them up in order to get them rehomed splitting them 
it's not something we want to do, but in a sense of their welfare and getting them in the home, um, it might be the best option because asking someone to take on two very active, very strong huskies is a lot for them to take on. Angel and Logan even miss each other when they're separated for short walks. Staff here really don't want to split them up and they're hoping someone will come forward to offer them both a home as soon as possible. Tim Scott, ITV News, Ramsbottom. Yeah, come on people, let's find these dogs at home. If you can help the Bleak Holt Sanctuary get homes for Angel and Logan, all the details of how to get in touch are on our website, the usual address, itv.com slash Granada. Yeah, they just want someone to love them and they are such handsome dogs, aren't they? Uh, OK, let's uh, find out what the weather's going to be like. Here's Joe. He's cooked up a storm and now he's going to scrape the fat into the bin instead of the sink. My guy. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Hang on, what's that fish? Hello again and good evening to you. Over the next few days, high pressure in charge of our weather. It's going to give us lots of dry, fine, usable weather ahead. Maybe a touch of frost to come as we get towards the end of the week by night. But temperatures aren't doing too badly, just less mild than it has been. And fog will be a feature over the next few nights as well. Many of us waking up to foggy conditions today and that continues to be the case through the next few days. High pressure builds in from the south end from today onwards. It's certainly looking more settled. A little bit of perhaps patchy rain in the far north of our region through tonight and tomorrow. But really the UK enjoying a settled few days ahead with no real rain in the forecast, fairly light winds and temperatures return to around average for the time of year. So not as mild as it has been. Back to this evening, still quite breezy out there, but some low cloud mistiness and one or two fog patches here and there. And as we go through the night, generally dry conditions with clearer skies across parts of Cheshire and Derbyshire. So maybe a touch of frost for you, but further north, under the cloud cover for parts of Cumbria and Lancashire, there could even be some drizzle and we should stay away from a frost. On to tomorrow, the sun will be up at 8.22 and sets tomorrow at 10 to 4. Tomorrow then, again for northern areas, a bit of a murky start to the day with drizzle for the Lakeland Fells, parts of the Pennines. Further south, it's brighter and from the word go should be dry with some sunshine here and there through the day tomorrow. Still breezy along our coastline, holding on to that cloud further north through the day. And temperatures on paper are fairly mild, 11 Celsius, but in the breeze perhaps feeling a little bit cooler. The outlook, it's settled, if a little dull and cloudy and turning chillier. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Bob, Bob! I'm here. Thanks, Joe. Finally, Granada Reports has solved the mystery of the mural which appeared on a wall in Tameside overnight. Yes, yeah, staff at a Sunflower Day Nursery in Staley Bridge were surprised to find this addition to the building when they arrived for work. Thanks to an appeal on a, our social media, Manchester Street artist Mr Eggs has got in touch to say it's his. They just need to put a little flower pot with a <laughs> flower underneath the watering can. Well done, Mr. Eggs. Cracking good idea. Bob on. Good night. Bye bye. Sorry, that was a.